few organizations have a reputation like the Central Intelligence Agency. The CIA's mission is to protect the United States from foreign and domestic threats. However, there have been questions about whether the CIA's actions always align with its stated goals. The CIA has been involved in various unusual activities over the years, including investigating underground aliens and conducting remote viewing with psychic abilities. The CIA's activities were more bizarre than terrifying. By the 1960s, driven by Cold War paranoia, the CIA believed the Soviets had discovered how to use paranormal sensors for intelligence gathering. They thought the U.S. was vulnerable to these parapsychology techniques and needed to take action. These techniques included psychokinesis, moving objects with the mind, out-of-body experiences, leaving one's body and moving around, and remote viewing, seeing or sensing things without any physical means. By 1970, the CIA was funding a research program called Scanning to investigate individuals with these supposed special abilities. These early experiments surprisingly reported an accuracy rate of over 65% in many cases. The perceived success was sufficient to launch a formal project, codenamed Gondola Wish, in 1977. Gondola Wish aimed to consolidate this parapsychology research for integration into counterintelligence. It proposed training individuals in these techniques to serve as special agents in Eastern Europe. The documents related to Gondola Wish treat it with complete seriousness. For instance, the CIA carefully considered who might be recruited for this work, concerned that the paranormal nature of the project could offend some people's religious beliefs, potentially leading them to expose what they saw as an immoral project. The documents indicate that the Soviets also valued this research. However, since Russia does not declassify information like the US, we can't know the extent of their experiments. It's possible the Soviets misled the CIA to waste their time, a tactic known to occur during the Cold War, but this is speculative. Some projects reported success. Patrick H. Price was considered especially talented, with experiments involving him reportedly yielding positive results. One remote viewing experiment accurately identified the crash site of a Soviet bomber in South Africa. Another described details of a new type of Soviet submarine, which was confirmed months later. Over time, it became clear that the research was unproductive. Most experiments with remote viewing and other methods failed, and luck likely explained any perceived successes. Gondola Wish was eventually incorporated into a larger US military project called Stargate, but it was apparent that nothing was to be gained. In 1995, the project was suspended and quickly declassified. The CIA spent millions of dollars and several decades researching these techniques with no results. However, the question remains, why did it take over 20 years to realize this? With the Soviets equally convinced, why did both sides invest so many resources into these ideas? No one really knows. Some believe the CIA may have learned more than they revealed, suggesting that while public documents indicate failure, there might be more to these experiments than admitted. Shifting from mental abilities to mind-altering substances, the CIA has faced long-standing accusations of involvement in global drug trafficking. As early as the Korean War, the CIA was alleged to have allied with drug smugglers as part of its fight against communism. The most notable case occurred in 1996, when journalist Gary Webb made significant claims that the CIA had been contributing to the crack cocaine epidemic in U.S. cities since the 1980s. To grasp Webb's allegations, we need to look at Nicaragua. In 1979, a revolution in Nicaragua led to the establishment of a new Marxist government. In response, several anti-communist rebel groups known as the Contras emerged. The U.S. provided support and guidance to the Contras, notably during the Reagan administration, which sought to fund them through the illegal sale of arms to Iran. However, only a small part of Contra funding came from this source. Instead, illegal drugs, particularly crack cocaine, primarily financed the Contra resistance. The CIA became aware of this and, according to journalist Gary Webb, supported and protected the drug trade to ensure continued funding for the anti-communist effort. Webb claimed that the surge of crack cocaine in American cities during the 1980s resulted from the CIA's support for the Contras. He alleged that the CIA shielded drug runners from prosecution and allowed drug networks to operate without interference. 
The crack epidemic of the 1980s had a severe impact on many inner cities, with the African American community being particularly affected. The drugs led to numerous deaths, and the harsh drug laws that followed disproportionately punished African American inner city communities, which many viewed as racial discrimination. When Webb's claims were published in 1996, the response was mixed. The mainstream media defended the CIA and dismissed Webb as a conspiracy theorist. In contrast, many African American activists and politicians saw Webb's claims as evidence that the CIA had intentionally created the crack epidemic to harm their communities and perpetuate racial inequality. The truth likely lies somewhere in between. The CIA acknowledged that it was aware of the drug trade but provided no evidence that it actively smuggled drugs or intentionally created an epidemic to harm American citizens. An internal CIA report stated that there was no proof of any CIA employee or asset being directly involved in the drug trade, and a later House of Representatives committee report came to a similar conclusion. Despite this, many still believed in Webb's claims and were skeptical of the CIA's honesty. The media's hostility towards Webb eventually forced him out of journalism. Tragically, Webb's potential return to his investigation ended with his death in 2004. He was found dead in his home with multiple gunshot wounds to the head, which was ruled a suicide. Accusations against the CIA regarding drug trafficking also extend to the secret war in Laos. With communist Vietnam as a neighbor, Laos was a key area of interest for the US, driven by the belief in the domino theory. During the 1960s and 70s, Laos was embroiled in a civil war between communist and anti-communist forces. The CIA trained tens of thousands of anti-communist fighters, primarily from the Hmong ethnic group, to combat the increasing influence of Vietnamese and Soviet-backed communist groups. This internal conflict is often overshadowed by the more well-known war in Vietnam, but it resulted in tens of thousands of deaths and created hundreds of thousands of Laotian refugees. Laos was drawn into the conflict between its neighbors due to the Ho Chi Minh Trail, which extended into Laos and was targeted by U.S. bombing campaigns. Consequently, Laos experienced extensive bombing, with more bombs dropped relative to its population than any other country in history. Tens of thousands of Laotian civilians were killed by these campaigns, and unexploded ordnance continued to cause casualties for decades. The CIA played a major role in this situation. It was key in supporting anti-communist groups and conducted over 580,000 bombing missions over Laos during that period. Similar to its actions in Nicaragua, the CIA also became involved in the drug trade to support its allies. The Golden Triangle of Southeast Asia, which includes parts of Laos, Thailand, and Myanmar, was a major source of the world's opium. Many groups supported by the CIA relied on opium sales to fund their operations, and the CIA is reported to have ignored this illicit trade. It is alleged that after communist forces captured Hmong airfields, the CIA began transporting drugs using Air America, a front organization for the CIA and the only American airline in the region. According to reports, the CIA is said to have facilitated the movement of drug smugglers and traffickers to maintain the opium trade. Journalist Alfred McCoy claims that the CIA provided arms, transport, and protection to the drug lords of the Golden Triangle in return for their support against communism. Despite the significant impacts of U.S. actions on Laos, the full truth of these events remains unclear. The CIA continues to deny any involvement in the Southeast Asian drug trade, and recognition for the victims of U.S. activities in Laos is limited. Although the CIA denies links to drugs in Southeast Asia, some might find the next CIA scheme in the region quite unbelievable. During the 1960s, the CIA, in collaboration with the U.S. Air Force, carried out a weather modification project in Southeast Asia called Operation Popeye. This project aimed to alter the weather to gain strategic advantages, though many considered it an impractical idea. The U.S. government, however, saw it differently. Researchers found that by using lead iodide and silver iodide dispersed from aircraft, they could create clouds and increase rainfall, a method known as cloud seeding. The CIA quickly saw potential in this technology. The first reported use occurred in August 1963 when Buddhist protests against the U.S.-backed Diem regime in South Vietnam were proving hard to manage. It was observed that rain dispersed the crowds, so the CIA used an Air America Beechcraft to perform cloud seeding above the protests, successfully driving them away. 
The technique was reportedly used again in Saigon in 1964. Its effectiveness led to its deployment during the Vietnam War. From 1967 to 1972, the CIA and the U.S. Air Force conducted missions over Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia to intensify the monsoon season. The main goals were to soften road surfaces, cause landslides to block roads, wash out river crossings to disrupt supply routes, and create saturated soil conditions to hinder travel, agriculture, and daily life. The technology used was unreliable and unpredictable, making it hard to determine if it was actually influencing the weather or if any effects were merely coincidental. There was even an incident where a CIA source reported that planes unintentionally caused seven inches of rain in two hours over one of their own special forces camps. Despite these uncertainties, the U.S. invested millions in the operation, conducting 2,602 cloud seeding missions in Southeast Asia over the years. When the project's documents became public in 1974, Congress launched an investigation due to concerns that weather modification as a weapon could trigger a dangerous arms race. The CIA argued that the project was ineffective, claiming that only 5% of the rainfall in the operation areas was due to Operation Popeye. The results were deemed limited and unverifiable, raising questions about why the CIA and U.S. Air Force spent tens of millions over several years on a project they believed was ineffective. Many people believe the impact of the CIA's actions in Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War was greater than officially acknowledged. Some argue that the CIA's intervention may have contributed to the devastating floods in North Vietnam in 1971, which resulted in around 100,000 deaths. If this is accurate, it represents only a fraction of the overall casualties linked to CIA operations in the region. The U.S. entered the Vietnam War following reported attacks by North Vietnamese ships on U.S. patrols in the Gulf of Tonkin. However, in 2005, it was disclosed that the CIA, NSA, and U.S. leadership knew the second attack never occurred. Instead of revealing this truth, the CIA suppressed it to advance U.S. involvement in the war, deceiving the American public. The heavy toll of the Vietnam War was largely attributed to the CIA, which was actively involved throughout the conflict, notably through Operation Phoenix. Launched in 1967, the Phoenix program aimed to weaken the Viet Cong through sabotage, terrorism, and targeted assassinations, building on existing operations in the region. While it involved some direct CIA actions, it was primarily an intelligence and coordination effort using Vietnamese and American soldiers. One CIA strategy was to establish Revolutionary Development Cadres, RDCs, which operated similarly to the Viet Cong. These RDCs were deployed to rural areas or integrated into local communities to spread anti-communist ideas and act as guerrilla fighters. Although they achieved some success, they were reported to be less effective overall, often fleeing at the first sign of resistance. In contrast, the Provincial Reconnaissance Units PRUs, special teams in South Vietnamese soldiers organized, trained, and equipped by the CIA were more successful. The PRUs operated similarly to a special forces unit, carrying out small-scale missions in areas controlled by the Viet Cong using CIA intelligence. Their tasks included sabotage, assassination, and capturing high-value targets. The CIA ran a large network of these units for several years, and they were considered highly effective. One U.S. official even described them as the most efficient unit in the Vietnam War. However, this effectiveness was marred by a reputation for thuggishness and brutality. Reports indicated that they frequently killed civilians, and by the late 1960s and early 1970s, some critics labeled them as civilian assassination squads. While it was acknowledged that civilians were killed during operations, some sources claimed that entire families were sometimes targeted if a VC informant was the objective. Despite this, others argue that most PRU operations aimed to capture rather than kill their targets. Capture did not ensure safety for these individuals. The CIA commonly used torture as a method, and this case was no exception. Techniques included beating, starvation, rape, and electrical torture. In one reported case, the PRUs inserted a six-inch dowel into a detainee's ears, through the brain, until death. While most of this torture was not directly carried out by the CIA, the agency was aware of it and indirectly endorsed these methods through its support of these groups. Eventually, the CIA was unable to manage Operation Phoenix alone, and MACV-SOG took over much of the operation. 
Despite this, the CIA remained heavily involved, especially in sharing information related to Phoenix. The CIA reported that nearly 82,000 targets were neutralized under Phoenix, with over 26,000 killed, while others were kidnapped, tortured, or otherwise mistreated. It is unclear how many of these targets were legitimate and how many were innocent civilians caught in the crossfire. It's not surprising that no one in the CIA has faced consequences for the actions mentioned in this video. The only apparent consequences seem to befall people like Gary Webb, who faced tragic and suspicious deaths after exposing these events. For each declassified secret, it's worth questioning what remains hidden. Without accountability for CIA personnel, it's unclear if lessons have been learned. In 30 years, what new secrets will emerge? Given the nature of the CIA's involvement in Southeast Asia, one must consider the broader implications of such clandestine activities. The operations detailed earlier, drug trafficking, weather modification, and targeted assassinations, illustrate a willingness to engage in ethically questionable actions for perceived strategic gains. These actions have not only shaped the geopolitical landscape, but have also left deep scars on the affected populations. In examining the consequences of the CIA's operations, it becomes clear that the agency operated with a significant degree of autonomy and secrecy. The secrecy often extended to the highest levels of government, as evidenced by the Gulf of Tonkin incident, where misinformation was used to justify a major escalation in the Vietnam War. Such actions raise serious questions about accountability and transparency within governmental institutions. The impacts on local populations were profound. In Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam, countless civilians were caught in the crossfire of covert operations. The environmental devastation from projects like Operation Popeye contributed to long-term agricultural and economic difficulties. Communities dependent on predictable weather patterns for their livelihoods found themselves facing new challenges, further compounding the hardships brought about by the war. Operation Phoenix, in particular, underscores the brutal reality of counterinsurgency efforts. The PRUs, while effective in their missions, often employed tactics that blurred the lines between combatants and non-combatants. The reported use of torture and extrajudicial killings not only violated human rights, but also undermined any moral high ground the U.S. might have claimed in its fight against communism. These actions left a legacy of mistrust and resentment that persists to this day. The CIA's involvement in drug trafficking also had far-reaching consequences. By facilitating the opium trade, the agency inadvertently contributed to the spread of addiction and crime both in Southeast Asia and beyond. This not only fueled local conflicts, but also had a ripple effect, contributing to global drug epidemics. The decision to support drug lords in exchange for anti-communist support highlights the often contradictory nature of covert operations, where short-term tactical gains are weighed against long-term strategic costs. Reflecting on these historical events, it's crucial to consider the lessons learned. The lack of accountability for the CIA's actions has set a dangerous precedent. Without proper oversight, there is a risk that similar operations could occur in the future, potentially in different regions or under different circumstances. This underscores the importance of transparency, ethical standards, and accountability in intelligence operations. Furthermore, the human cost of these operations cannot be ignored. The suffering of the people in Southeast Asia serves as a stark reminder of the collateral damage that can result from covert actions. Their stories, often overshadowed by geopolitical narratives, are a testament to the resilience and strength of those who endured these hardships. In moving forward, it's imperative that governments and intelligence agencies alike strive for greater transparency and accountability. The legacy of the CIA's operations in Southeast Asia should serve as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the profound impact that secretive and unregulated actions have on both local populations and global stability. Ensuring that history does not repeat itself requires vigilance, ethical conduct, and a commitment to upholding the principles of justice and human rights. As we continue to uncover the truth about past operations, it is also essential to support efforts that seek to bring justice and recognition to the victims. This includes advocating for reparations, acknowledging historical wrongs, and promoting healing and reconciliation in affected communities. Only through such measures can we hope to address the injustices of the past and build a more just and accountable future. Thanks for watching. And please be sure to subscribe to our channel for more content like this.